What is up everyone, French Fry Warrior here, and today I'll be going over Records of Ragnarok chapter 93 and 94 with y'all. So that means we got a double chapter this month. Clearly spoilers will be ahead, and like usual, we'll go over the previous chapter. If y'all just want to skip the recap and go straight into the new chapter, then jump to this time that's currently on the screen to skip the recap once again. Within last month's chapter, we start off with Okita reminiscing about the promise he has yet to make to Kondo. As they walk through the town, Okita is ashamed of losing control over his demonic instincts, which has caused him to harm someone during training. Feeling like a burden, Okita apologizes to Kondo for the trouble, but Kondo dismisses the statement and reminds Okita that he accepts everything about him. Despite this, Okita still doubts himself and longs to become a true samurai like Kondo. Kondo then asks if Okita knows what Boo and Bushido means. Okita guesses that it means having the power to kill your enemies. And while he's not exactly wrong, Kondo enlightens us it really means to stake your life on your own beliefs, allowing one to become a true samurai and die with a smile on their face. Okita seems confused, however, Kondo states that Okita will get it one day. He, however, doubts himself and wonders if such a thing is possible for a monster like him. Kondo encourages him to stop worrying and simply tells him to tell himself that he will become a true samurai. Okita agrees and the two make it a promise. Back to the present time around 10, Okita bloodied on the ground and Susano sits for a second. The god audience cheers and Okita's squad watches in shock. Kondo calls out to Okita and he reawakens. Then begins to stand again, stating he didn't fulfill his promise. His resilience astonishes everyone and they see his determination to not die until he fulfills his promise. We then dive into another flashback that highlights Okita attempting to train while stating his desire to be useful to his squad. Despite Okita's rise to popularity during the era, a war had broken out that endangered Okita's squad and they needed his skills. However, Okita was sick with tuberculosis, causing him to be bedridden. This did not deter Okita from training still, although his body was declining at a rapid rate and he soon collapsed. He coughs up blood and is pulled into his inner consciousness where his demon side, Onigo, resides. Onigo's, Okita's most ferocious battle instinct, has always been with him since birth, though at a great cost. The demon's power constantly eats away at Okita's life force. Seeing Okita's weakened state, Onigo comments on how frail he's become and Okita himself senses his death upon him. Onigo states his time is up and they'll no longer be able to fight together. Unable to accept this fate, Okita stretches out his hand and begs not to die yet, only to see phantoms of his squad mates during his last breath. Back to the present battle, Okita claims he still wants to fight, causing the human audience to cheer for him. One of his squad mates notices Okita's eyes turning blue while he states that his body isn't holding him back anymore, allowing both Okita and Onigo to go all out. Onigo warns that doing this will kill Okita, but Okita embraces this fate, declaring that this is what it means to be a samurai. The two come together and agree to give it everything while emitting an immense amount of pressure that gives off a blue color symbolizing the color of the Shinsengumi. His teammates stand proud and Kondo cries seeing Okita as a true samurai. Okita states his captain title and claims he will go first. With all this happening, Susano sees this as a reward for all the training he did hoping to use these skills one day. This moment confirms that his life was given for this moment and he thanks Okita. As Okita's fate seems sealed, the question lingers, can he secure a victory for humanity or will he succumb to his demon powers before he can fulfill his promise to Kondo? Now that the recap is done, this new double chapter opens up 
with Tsusuno and Okita preparing themselves to clash once more. Some human spectators notice that his blue aura seems to be burning his life force, giving the idea that Okita must hurry. Okita thanks his Valkyrie for allowing him to be selfish, who is revealed to be the sixth Valkyrie sister named Skalmud. She reassures him, telling Okita not to worry and to fight to his heart's content. Go questions the two's safety as she gets an uneasy feeling. Brunhilde states that they both can sense that this will be Okita's final battle as a swordsman despite him winning or losing. Due to fusing with Onigo, his power consumes Okita's body and normally would have collapsed due to that same power. However, Skalmud's ability allow Okita to wield this power easier by concentrating all of his potential from the past, present, and future all into this moment. Meaning, the experience and skills Okita gained while he was alive and the potential future skills he could have gained had it not been for a disease is all being used right now. Essentially, Okita is now the perfect swordsman, drawing out his maximum potential for this final battle. This power Skalmod wields is called Age of Sword, allowing Okita to put all his swordsmanship on display. Okita gains an incredible boost in speed and launches an aggressive assault on Susano. He opens with a Demon Claw thrust, but Susano attempts to counter with the Shinra Yayarozu. He deflects Okita's blade and strikes, but Okita dodges and comes behind with an attack called Flying Dragon. Susano, with impressive reaction, manages to slash behind him, and Okita still dodges, then follows up with another dragon attack that Susano blocks. Not finished yet, Okita rapidly follows up with another attack, locking Susano in a combo. Susano notes that Okita's speed can't even be described as fast because each time Susano dodges or blocks, another strike is already coming at him, leaving no opportunity to counterattack or even escape. Keeping up the pressure, Okita unleashes an immense barrage of combo moves on Susano, who is desperately struggling to block them all. Even with this dangerous situation, Susano is still determined to keep going with the Shinra Yayarozu that's barely able to keep up. The battle becomes so fast that even Hemdal can't even see what's happening. Zeus remarks on their astonishing abilities while Hermes notice that both Suso and Nokita are evolving in real time, pushing their swordsmanship beyond the limits of the mortals and gods alike. To Zeus, such a feat seems impossible as all the consecutive strikes and movements exceed what humans are capable of. Okita's squad mates are very impressed with his skills and wonder if such a skill comes from their fighting style. Kondo remarks that such strikes are deadly blows from the Tenen Rishin Ryu style that are designed for one hit kills. Unleashing these attacks back to back should be impossible for body mechanics, leaving Kondo to question just when and where did Okita think of such a strategy. One person in the audience was able to recognize Okita's combos and was happy for him, and that person was a child named Ichimatsu. We quickly turn to a flashback that reveals even after Okita was bedridden, he never stopped his swordsmanship. Ichimatsu believes Okita should rest while Okita isn't ready yet. He calls up more blood, and Ichimatsu warns that if he doesn't stop, then he'll die. This doesn't phase Okita and he begs for Ichimatsu to make more ink for him. What Okita was writing was over 80 techniques of the Tenen Rishin Ryu style to combo with each other that was constantly refined over and over, allowing Okita to develop his own unique martial art, hoping to use it one day to fight with Kondo and his squad. These techniques were far exceeding normal human limits but because Okita created and knew about these combos, it granted him the ability to perform these combos and transcend human logic, soaring into the heavens. After a relentless barrage of combos, Okita jumped into the air, launching a technique 
called Tenen Rishinryu Empyrean, or the kite that returns to the heavens, symbolizing a falcon soaring into the heavens. Tears come down Kondo's face as he sees Okita use this technique, recognizing it as a move that expresses the state of all things freely enjoying themselves and is derived from a Chinese poem, his foster father, who was also the third headmaster of their style. This poem was used as a seal and inscription for ultimate moves in their school. Realizing that Okita had reached the highest realm of that technique, a level where no one else had reached. More combos from Okita continue to flow. Meanwhile, Susano thinks to himself that he can't even catch his breath and feels like he's being crushed. Despite the overwhelming pressure, he's deeply impressed by Okita's mastery, shouting that Okita is the greatest swordsman as he slashes around him. Okita dashes to the side, replying that Susano led him to his peak and thanks him before starting his three-stage thrust. Kondo realizes that something is different and is not exactly his usual three-stage thrust. Ichimatsu tells Okita to go for it and Akita begins his technique. His first strike is knocked away, his second strike was also blocked but Okita dashed behind him during the attack. This final strike is said to have transcended the speed of gods and humanity piercing the boundary between God and man, allowing Okita to catch Susan off guard and strike with his third blow, this time being called Demon Claw 3 Stage Thrust, highlighting both Onigo and Okita's power in this attack. Susano does block it, but he's pushed back and his divine weapon begins to crack from the power. Susano tries to deflect and counterattack, resulting in a clash between the two. Everyone is shocked and awaits to see who won, and it's shown that Okita has pierced right through the divine weapon and Susano himself, landing a significant blow. The humans all cheer while Susano's family and supporters stand in disbelief. Everyone thought Okita won, but Okita was the only one who felt uneasy. Susano stands and notices that it's a real battle. He remembers that even when Okita wasn't able to wield a sword, he still never gave up on swordsmanship. He understands this is true swordsmanship and raises his hands in the air, claiming that due to Okita, he was finally able to reach it. All are puzzled as to what Susano is attempting and it seems as if he's praying. With both hands in the air, he grasps his hand as if he were holding a hilt then slowly assumed a stance which caused Okita to be on guard. After a few moments, he swung down an invisible sword, accomplishing an unheard of miracle. It seemed like Okita successfully dodged the attack, however, sword slash marks appeared on his left arm and left leg, indicating he's been struck. Confused, Okita wonders if he was cut and quickly realizes that his bones with slice clean in half as he falls to his knees. Finally, Susano announces that he has finally reached the pinnacle of swordsmanship, Musoken, the unornamented sword, a thoughtless, unparalleled strike that transcends even the need for a physical blade. With this astonishing development, the double chapter comes to a dramatic close. Wow, fellas. There was certainly a lot of things in this chapter and we have a decent amount of things to go over. But let's first address the elephant in the room. Hi. <sighs> so as we saw Okita's Valkyrie, Skull Mode was revealed and oh boy did she come hella late to the party. I really wish they showed her earlier and have her and then Okita develop a stronger bond with each other. I don't know, I always felt that the fighters should at least have some type of bond or genuine interaction with their Valkyries since both of their lives are on the line. Granted, not all the fighters really bonded with their Valkyries like Lubu who was never even shown to talk to his Valkyrie. Hell, Jack was over here abusing his Valkyrie at first. 
Overall, wish she appeared earlier. One more thing about like her and Okita is, yo, her ability is insane, bro. Like, visualize this. You have the potential of all your past, present, and future experiences all into one. So whatever achievements, a feat one could achieve in the future is already given to the person. Very similar to Gohan getting his potential unlocked by the Elder Kai. Just imagine this ability on Kojiro, someone who can predict things like crazy. But I digress. This does however make Okita crazy buffed and a handful of gods would already fall to Okita with this ability. On that note, I'm surprised Susanoo was able to block all of Okita's never ending combos. As I said, other gods would have easily folded in this situation. But here, we got Susanoo blocking almost all of them. Dude got that insane reaction time like Beelzebub. Honestly, I'm very impressed with Susanoo and how he's able to keep up with Okita even after being locked in on his combos, unable to even breathe. Naturally, the combo panels were also amazing as usual, and brother, I need Okita's devotion in life cause even after being confined to the bed and suffering in pain due to tuberculosis, my man was really out here creating a whole new martial art that defied human logic. He really is a true samurai at this point. Now I want to see Okita versus Kojiro too at this point. I really want to see what that outcome would be. I really thought after Okita's demon claw, three stage thrust, breaking Susanoo's blade and piercing him was the end of Susanoo, which I'm surprised about because this divine weapon was made by both man and god. And yes, other gods has had their divine weapon shattered, but I feel like Susanoo's sacred treasure could potentially have a higher durability since once again both multiple gods and humans worked on it. Even with no weapon though, Susanoo is still a major threat with a legitimate invisible sword. Like, my dude, are you serious? And he already got part of Okita. So honestly, this makes the match a flip of a coin and could go in either one's favor. And as Boonhilde said earlier, whether win or lose, this will be Okita's final fight. So he's cooked. Susan himself seems like after one or two blows, he might be cooked himself. Overall, I'm still on Team Okita, but honestly, I'd have to say he has a 60% chance of winning. This chapter features so many new feats from both sides, and now it kind of puts these two in a whole nother different tier of power. The feats like the never ending combos and the invisible sword is just absolutely insane. Finally, the thing I love the most is how both swordsmen lost the ability to fight at some point in time, and instead of giving up, they both continued to find a way to evolve and come up with totally new techniques that transcend logic. Both fighters pushing and motivating each other to new heights, never giving up on the sword, and showing their love and devotion to swordsmanship. This right here is the best swordsman fight ever. When I think of swordsmen, these two legends come to mind as the perfect representation of swordsmanship for both mortals and divine beings. Now, with that all out of the way, I believe I have nothing more to comment on and you are all free to go now. Hope this month's double chapter was fun for you guys and let me know your thoughts as usual in the comments below and how you view the feats performed in this chapter. Thank you for watching the video so far. I as always will appreciate the time dedicated to watching these. It means a lot to me. Stay safe out there and be good people. I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace.